Right guys, I want to start this off by saying I'm sorry I haven't made video for about three weeks now, but really that was just because I was getting in the hype of Euro 2016, watching all the games and, you know, staying in there because I knew England were in there. Not anymore, that is. Not anymore, because the shambolic performance of the England players infuriates me. Let me just get this on a second. Right, see that? He's supposed to be the England captain. The England captain, Wayne Rooney. What did he do? What did the rest of the team do? Right? He's looking there. Look how proud he looks there. Look how proud he looks. He should be not proud. Not proud at all. Jesus Christ, man. When do I start? When do I start, right? I've watched four major tournaments with England. Four, right? Cut not win a single knockout game in 2014. We didn't even get out of the group. Like, I guarantee, yeah, I know the group was quite tough. I had people like Italy, Uruguay. Uruguay had a decent side. But still, it's not good enough. And... I've watched three tournaments now with Roy Hodgson in it. I started in 2010 and now we're here in 2016. Well, when I think of 2012, I thought, well, we got out of the group stages and we lost some penalties to Italy. Italy are a decent side. I mean, we should have beaten them that day. It's not good enough, but I could have forgiven him just because it was Italy, right? 2014 World Cup, that was nearly, I nearly went against Roy Hodgson. I was really angry, but... I thought, well, I'll give him one more chance. We should give him one more chance. We give him that one more chance. We have arguably one of the best young and talented squads that we've ever produced in an England team. And we bottle it, like always. If you're a young England fan out there, don't bother. You may as well watch Wimbledon. You may as well watch tennis. Don't get into football because you get let down by England time and time again. Right, don't get me started on the performance yesterday. Right, Iceland. Iceland, the shot you go with your mum. Your mum's go to Iceland. Peter Andre. Jesus Christ, man. Iceland has a population about the size of Leicester, right? To put that in perspective, there are 60, I mean, nearly 70 million people in England, right? So, it's just ridiculous, ridiculous. I mean, they reckon if you're like 18 to 30 years old, you've got a 1 in 1,000 chance of playing in that team yesterday. Like, how can that be possible that a team that has a manager who gets paid 4.5 million a year, has players who are on 300 grand a year, can't be a team who has a part-time dentist for an assistant manager, and most of their players don't even play for a professional club? Gilfie Sigerson's the only exception, really, who plays for a Premier League club. The rest, I mean, there's no actual professional football teams in Iceland. That's how bad it is. We have like a load of different leagues, a load of different professional teams. Iceland don't even have any of them. And they still beat us. I mean, come on. Like, I could have forgiven against Italy. I mean, I the group, the 2014 one, I mean, I thought we were going to get through, but there was no third place in the World Cup. So, you know, I guess Uruguay and Italy are better than us. But to lose to Iceland is embarrassing enough, right? It's so embarrassing. That's, that's all you could say. It's, it's abysmal and ba embarrassing. No one on that pitch, no one deserved to wear the shirt that night. Rashford came on, did some good bits. And to be honest, stupid dick Roy Hodgson put him on for the last four minutes. The one player who has some pace and has no fear in our team. right? I, I think if he was on for um, a bit longer, maybe, maybe you can just put him on in the 80th minute or the 86th minute. Maybe then we could have got a goal and taken it to extra time. But no. He decided to bring him on when it's too late. What's the point? You may as well freaking bring on a defender if you're going to bring on an attacking player in the 86th minute. There is no point at all. And it seems like we do not, we cannot win a competitive game at Euros. What I mean, like, so knockout game, basically. We cannot win them. We just don't win them every single time. We always go out in, like, the round of 16. Every time we get through the groups. And I think it's, we should just stop having these large expectations. We should just stop. We should actually just think, oh, it'll be good if we get out of the group, you know. It'll be good if we get out of the group, and then we can see what happens from there. But no, they build you up with a, a, a great qualifying campaign. That's the only thing we're good at. England, if, if the World Cup was done on qualifying, we would win every single year. I mean, they're qualifying for the Euros, 10 wins out of 10. Ridiculous. And, and we can't win against Russia when we get there. Absolutely shocking. It does my head in, the fact that it builds you and builds you up. You always forget about the past failure. So, 
I mean, this year, everyone forgot about the World Cup and how we did really bad. Two years go by, that's quite a long time, to be fair. We get to the Euros, we see all these young, hungry players that they speak of, and to be honest, I didn't see that. They're not hungry at all, but anyway, we get built up, and then they go to the Euros, and we're, we're full of apprehension, we're full of, um, sort of, you know, oh, we can actually do it this year, you know, our squad looks hungry. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Our, our squad, I mean, I, I actually think it'll be, I mean, if this England team got to the quarterfinals, right, I've not seen an England team get to the quarterfinals in a major tournament. And there's been four major tournaments. Never. I haven't seen an England team get to a quarter-final of the tournament. I, I thought it was guaranteed, right? We took the lead, four min like two minutes in. We couldn't keep it for like 30 seconds. 34 seconds they scored within kick-off. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I'm sorry, Roy Hodgson, but I was thanking God that he stepped down after that game. I mean, come on, man. You... I can't believe the FA kept him on after the World Cup, to be honest. I thought he was gone. I wanted to give him a bit of a chance, and now I'm really um, annoyed with myself that I said I wanted to give him a chance, because really, I should have been saying, get that fucker out, because he's absolutely terrible. But, I, I they, they did give him a chance, to be fair. And, you know, I like giving people chances. But then when you step on that chance, and you ruin it, you just ruin a whole nation and to be honest it's not all Roy Hodgson's fault it's not all his fault it's the players fault as well for not showing any desire I mean in that last 30 minutes no one really cared that we were 2-1 down and we, and we were gonna go out of the Euros this scene everyone was just dossing about you know it's almost like they were 2-0 up against Crystal Palace or something and like they just wanted to see the game out no you're in the competitive um, tournament and you need to get win this to get through it's not the group stages anymore when oh you can just say oh loss is a bad game or go on to the next one there is no next game oh my god alright guys I don't want to keep keeping this rant on too long so I want to talk about the next England manager, that would be it for me because I just can't be asked with this. So there's many saying that Gareth Southgate, the under-21s manager, is now um, front-runner to become the England manager. And to be honest, I, I don't have any hope really for him. Every England manager is the same, right? You come in, you think, oh, it's a fresh new start. And you think, oh, this manager, I, I guarantee, right? I guarantee, you can quote me on this, we will do so well in qualifying. We'll qualify top of our group. And, you know, everyone will get really excited for the World Cup. You know, oh, will we qualify top of our group? And we'll probably bring in some not, um, really hungry young players. Um, and they'll probably start performing really well in the qualifying. And then we'll think, oh, look at these guys, they're really good. I mean, hopefully, hopefully, I don't know why I'm saying this now. But hopefully, the players, the young players that are in this team at the moment will be at their peak um, in Russia in 2018. But it's Gareth Southgate, man. And he will not change a thing. I guarantee it. And the next World Cup, I think, this is my prediction, I'm going to have low expectations. I think if we get out of the group, that'll be something that we can, you know, be happy with. I'll be happy with anyway. But to be honest, though, really, with the squads we've got and the reputation we've got, we should be doing much better. We should be doing much better. But to be honest... We're out now. We're out of the Euros and Roy Hodgson has resigned. Gary Neville and his, his partner in crime have gone with him. So a massive clear out. Really, we need a clear out of the dickheads of the FA. Maybe then we can start playing proper football, you know. I mean, Gareth Southgate came into the FA and he said, oh, we're going to change the style of football we play, you know, more like the Spanish. And at that time, they were winning tournaments and stuff. I haven't seen a single piece of evidence for that. A single piece of evidence. And it's just getting frustrating now. So I'm I'm going to end the video guys, if you're as frustrated as me, leave a like on the video, subscribe for more content on my channel, I'm sorry for not making a video for three weeks, I was just caught up in the hype of Euro 2016 and really that was a massive mistake wasn't it, but I'll be making more videos because now we're out of the Euros and there's nothing to fucking care about, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.